Well, very, very warm welcome to everyone under a Europe Dome. Um, first, some small technical things. First of all, we're being filmed. If anyone has a problem with that, please let us know, then we make sure you're not under. Good. Second of all, if you talk, it's important you talk into the microphone. It doesn't make your voice any louder, as you can hear right now, but it makes sure that we can hear you on the video well. Okay, um, so we're going to talk about climate change in the EU here. And I actually want to start with the basic question. What is climate change and what are the big, big problems when we talk about climate change? So I would like to make a round and you can also react to each other, but just to give everyone a moment to give some input. Can I start with you? Um, climate... So it's important to talk in. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think the climate change is due to global warming you are uh, mm -hmm. discussing about. Yeah, due to the pollutions around uh, not only Europe, all over the world. So emissions from the plastics and um, some power stations. So uh, I think due to that, uh, the climate change is also urgent. So and you guys are from India, right? Yes. yes. What can you... Uh, do you notice things from climate change in India itself? Uh, there is a drastic change in uh, Indian climatic seasons, but if you take a uh, few decades before, it's completely different in our country. But nowadays, it's it's like anything. Uh, actually, last uh, last week, last two weeks before the summer started, and now the temperature is around 38, and it'll go up to 45 in another one or two weeks, most probably in one month. It will be 45 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you put some uh, eggs on the floor, it will get the omelette. <laughs> you don't need any. You don't want to any pans or like that. And just on the road itself, uh, you couldn't walk. Also, with the barefoot, you need something to walk, and it's very hot. But actually, we we came la last month before last month. So we once we enter into the EU, EU, it's completely different. We couldn't manage the cold, <laughs> but people are saying that uh, you are very lucky. You are came in summer here. Actually, this is they told like this is summer, <laughs> but this is like uh, this temperature is not even in uh, uh, winter in our country. We couldn't feel this much. Uh, Cold. Cold. <laughs> it's very difficult. For this climate, we have to go to some hill stations in our country. There only we can feel this temperature. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big change. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. But from uh, from our uh, point of view, uh, this country is completely still the same. Here, there is no that much. Uh, maybe we are feeling that, like the feeling like that. Maybe you guys who are living here maybe feel the uh, climatic change between the decades maybe but we don't know well, yes yeah <laughs> do you want to give some yeah well um, about climate change uh, and you asked me the question uh, if, if we, we don't have winters anymore mm. so when I was a little kid we had a huge package of snow during the winter time mm. and uh, nowadays when it snows everyone is oh it snows really it's 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 like a miracle mm. so um, that's that's uh, from that point of view I can say well uh, the temperature is rising indeed um, when I'm uh, on the road with my uh, car I see huge 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 um, f files of, of, of cars but also um, traffic uh, large vans who say here vrachtwagens um, trucks trucks um, and I say well the all um, it's day in day out I I uh, um, I see these these files uh, going through um, Netherlands, go to the EU, EU, and I say, well, it can't be. It, this is not normal. We are not. We are so doing so such, such ugly things to the world, to um, and and um, I think climate change is really a big thing, but in the minds of people, it's rather one of those things you have to care about so well you can also care about it tomorrow something like that 
and uh, the, the the sense of urgency i don't i feel it sometimes uh, in some political parties i i, I see that they have uh, it on their um f a, a list of of uh, uh, the priority list but um, in the minds of people well yeah okay you need a car you need all your luxury things you need you want to travel by plane so we are used to all these things and I think it's it takes maybe a century <laughs> to change the, the way we wanted to to live and to treat our our earth uh, so I'm very, very, very worried. Thank you. Yeah, I'm from Holland also, and also I'm very worried. I recognize the the, the temperature uh, rising up. I recognize the snow uh, being never here again. <laughs> and uh, I think the big problem is that all people will say, well, we've got to do something about the climate. But uh, if people realize what it means for themselves, they have got uh, to live in a different way. Usually they don't like to do that. So I think uh, I'm very worried also mm. about it. I think it's very difficult to change. I think what we need is uh, political parties who dare to say uh, the truth and dare to say want, mm. what they want to do about it mm -hmm. and what will be the price for people. And I think it's important that uh, uh, not only the, the people in the houses have to pay for the, the things that need to be done, but also the organizations that uh, pollute very much. So that's it. Mm. Thank you. Uh, so I, I also yeah. think um, the government has to um, uh, has to um, put in a lot, a lot, a lot of money for the citizens to um, adjust their way of living. Because nowadays, if I want to have an electric car. I can have sun cells on my sh on my roof. Okay, I can afford that, but um, I have to buy an electric car and I have to buy um, this thing, um, an oplaadpaal, <laughs> charging station, <laughs> charging station, <laughs> um, and um, uh, because in 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 my whole area there are two points where you can charge yeah. uh, uh, an electric car mm -hmm. i think in the whole street uh, every house has to have such a, a, ch a charging point so if the government wants to um, invest in those facilities i think then people want to is, is it all right okay then then people uh, maybe they they want to cooperate because now everyone thinks, okay, yes, yes, pollution, yes, yes, what can I do about it? Okay, it costs a lot of money, it costs a lot of energy. Oh, no, 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 I, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. So I think that's um, not okay. And I think the government has to pull, invest a lot more. We are a rich country, so I think... Uh, at least Holland has to do something about this, but I think uh, we can't do it alone. We have to have the European Union to join this idea, helping the citizens to realize another way of living. So I put an enormous, how say that, appeal on on the European Union to to help the citizens to adjust the way of life. I have a more direct question to you guys. Is is climate change also a hot topic in uh, in India to debate? Yeah, it is. Uh, um, like um, the not only yes, it is. Um, uh, the when we are, when we are comparing the last uh, last years or last decades, uh, the temperature is rising too much, and I, I don't think so. It is uh, not only depends on government. This depends on individuals also. So every person has to. Uh, so most of not only uh, we are using in plastics and we are using everything we are using. So it's the individual person responsibility to take. So they won't use plastic. They they use bio 
so like that if every individual take their own responsibility maybe it will be good so the government also take some decision and the organization orga, organization like uh, the plastic product manufacturer also they will go uh, different products like that yeah mm. i think uh, there is a huge difference in your country and from our country is population yeah 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 <laughs> i think do you accept <laughs> our population is too huge we are next to china india mm -hmm. this is next to we china millions millions of yeah. people eh? yeah 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 uh, 500 million yeah I maybe think. maybe i don't know the like, exact yeah. count mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's a second place in the world mm -hmm. this next to china maybe we may cross <laughs> we come to first <laughs> in the population yeah, yeah. it's good I have to close? No, no, no. No, it's perfect. He just wants to say something later. Yeah, okay, okay. I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Later. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And uh, here, uh, the system wise, it's good actually. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Uh, people are uh, almost 99% following the system. But in our country, the system is making people following the system. It's very much difficult. on um, their education education is wise also we need to improve a lot so once education will give the knowledge to the people if something is done by the people the effect of the the thing they don't know that is our problem actually we need to grow more 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 still we need to reach some level right Do you mean that there needs to be more awareness yeah, in in people to to yeah. about climate change? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, unknowingly, we are doing some things related to climate change, but we don't know that it's affect the climate change, the temperature rising. Nowadays, we are start speaking about that in our country, but before it's not there. But now, because of this temperature, even the uneducated and educated people also feel the same the temperature now. Yeah, they can feel. now they started why it's like that like this when i born it's not like this now it's a climate has changed like this mm. so the awareness is not there you need to get the people more aware about the temperature change mm -hmm. pollution the first cause for the temperature i think pollution nice thank you you wanted to ask something Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, how people from India looks to the Western countries, especially for the EU, for example, or Germany. You are living in in, in Germany, and you know most of the problems with the climate changing, uh, ch climate change, is made by the Western countries. No, also, and now we discuss in Germany we. can't go out from coal so early because we have to look about our economy mm -hmm. uh, then that's the point you are in in india not so uh, uh, big uh, it has entwickelt or so also uh, de developed. developed maybe uh, you, you understand what i mean and the problems are made from the western countries and uh, what's for for i don't think so like that uh, because uh, um, the vehicles which we are using it's comparatively huge i think it's comparatively western countries it's uh, it's more in our country i think it's a uh, the temperature change because of problem if you took that is a one point because of vehicle usage the cars and uh, public transportation vehicles like that here because of the only reason the population we have to we supposed to use more and more 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 vehicles but if you take uh, electricals it's not that mm. much in mm. our country but we are but what has for bit of uh, example uh, x example examples for for other countries they are looking to the western countries and we had made this the last maybe 50 60 years mm. and now we know it's not a good way to live so okay. Eh? Okay. and yeah. when you go this way like we the last 50 years so I think we was only question I think we we should uh, that's what I I I said before uh, the awareness 
we are we are we are very 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 far away from the target we have to start we are very far away we started from we are started this thinking is very late i think we have to be think is before uh, as you said 50 60 years before maybe uh, at the time if you started this may not be happened at this time i think Do you guys have the idea in Germany or in the Netherlands that there's enough awareness about climate change? That people know enough about it? Uh, I think uh, people can know if they really look at uh, uh, the topics and the news. Uh, but I think a lot of people find it different to, uh, to take the consequences about it. And I think the government is always... Uh, uh, now uh, talking a lot about the costs for the people but I think it would be better not to emph uh, emphasize the, the costs but more the little things you can do about it so uh, there has to be a more positive a more cheerful way I think to uh, well I did this and uh, it's a bit like uh, as if it is a kind of uh, mode uh, fashion to to work with the climate uh, does some of you want to add something uh, do you think there's enough awareness in the Netherlands in Germany where you're living actually, now actually as uh, Indians mm -hmm. Asians, we don't know <laughs> about uh, uh, the awareness of peoples here who's mm -hmm. living here actually we don't know we don't did, did how to say anything <laughs> we don't want to say anything yeah, about we it because we don't know actually. actually we are here from last month so uh, yeah. <laughs> so we are not so long so that's why we don't know about that maybe CR he can help you mm -hmm. well I think there are awareness uh, at some groups in our societies but also you have um, a lot of people who deny the climate change and um, uh, the last elections uh, for uh, in Holland we saw some parties who um, denied the, the, the effects of the, the cli climate change um, they deny it very very strongly so uh, they say well we are responsible for um, um, a very small part of this world so uh, let others do a uh, start first and then we join and um, uh, because it's um, it's they, they, they frighten people um, with the huge costs and um, then you c that you can't fly anymore or that you can't live the way the luxury way we, we live nowadays um, so I think this awareness, um, a lot of people are very comfortable to deny. And they think, well, it will last. It, these, these, um, these guys who uh, are very extreme. And, um, and when you have some uh, scientific, um, sci uh, a lot of sci scientists have a lot of proof about it, but well, when you have only y your um, your Facebook to, uh, <laughs> or or only some some um, some ways to get information, you never hear any scientists at all. So that frightens me a lot. Um, worries me a lot. I think that um, you have these these narrow-minded uh, ways of um, getting your information and. Um, so I think um, this this attitude will will harm us all. Who do you think? This is a question to everyone. Who do you think should take the responsibility for climate change? Is that politics? Is that us? Is the citizens? Is that companies? Who should take the responsibility? I think all of them in their own way. So I think the politicians have to take the responsibility to tell what is happening and what choices they make uh, and what are the consequences, the positive and the negative consequences. I think every citizen has the responsibility to think about what's the, the effect of my way of living. And uh, I think it would be very good when uh, citizens, citizens uh, talked a lot uh, like this uh, uh, about uh, what's happening and I think uh, the organizations also have a very uh, big responsibility 
to think about uh, the consequences of what they do uh, and and make some decisions about it. I just want to add some more points here from our country point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I said uh, there is no awareness in our country, but it started actually. We have started. St we have started speaking about the temperature change, temperature increasing, global warming. There is so many NGOs are working in uh, our country. Mm -hmm. They are let the people should uh, make awareness, make aware of uh, what uh, what the people doing things. Which the thing is exactly connecting to the global warming. They are started exploring the things to the peoples. So I think that would help. Maybe not immediately but this that will give uh, some effect on the global actually we are in the path actually mm -hmm. but as a system wise as a government the every, everyone should take this point as a priority on the top priority, yes. that priority I do agree. that's must yes. we are we are thinking we are have a, we have a lot of lot of problems in our day to day lives mm -hmm. and for everything we are blaming our our uh, system our politicians <laughs> parties everything we are blaming it usually human will supposed to blame others they they don't take they don't themselves as the reason the cause yeah, yeah. they don't take responsible and exactly. at the initial once they make them feel this is a problem mm -hmm. then only they can get the account and they can start doing react yeah. so actually we are started but actually not at the time <laughs> but it's late maybe yeah. we will do, do you guys think it's too late to do something about climate change yeah yeah almost, yeah, almost. you want to say something i think almost these processes uh, are very dangerous and um, they have huge impact on future decades so um, if you don't start now immediately to do a lot of things and to invest a lot of um, money in um, all kinds of structures to um, adjust to this problem i think the, this is this is a huge a huge problem for next generations yes and that worries me a lot so i i made my point clear <laughs> so i i think um all right the citizens have to have to be more aware of the problem but also i think the government has to show some leadership on this topic because they are um the main issue of polit politicians is they have to guarantee we are safe we're living in a safe world but is it okay what I'm talking about? Yes? Okay. Um, we're living in a safe world. So if um, if, if, if the route we are, we're taking by now is very, very dangerous for us, but also for next generations, I think um, they don't show leadership if they don't. Uh, t um, they have to, to point this this item as, as the one priority, I think. And um, when you have, um, in, when you invest in this um, kind of um, technologies, um, I think y you have you have the future. Mm -hmm. That that I think, I think what what we what we are living in now is just, it's it's fading. It's it's um, um, after several decades, it's behind us, and we we have to think about what future ways of living and technology we need. So that's I, I hope the European Union will show show this point. We are blown away, <laughs> and the wind is very cool. So, do you guys think that? Um, do, you, do you agree with my point of view? No. I think uh, you've got a good point, uh, and I'm very worried also. But uh, yesterday, I uh, we saw something on uh, on the news which gave us more optimism. There's a Dutch guy uh, who used to make uh, flowers, uh, bolle, bloembollen.
flower uh, flower balls, okay. like uh, you see them a lot. And uh, he has uh, uh, bedacht, uh, figured something out that might help. He says that it's very important that there are a lot of trees. And he made an invention, and the invention makes it possible for trees to grow in the desert. Uh -huh. And it's a very simple system which doesn't uh, cost a lot of money and the trees uh, do need very little of water. And it was very uh, uh, funny to hear that uh, the countries with the desert, some countries are very interested and he has won a prize. And he says that when all the, uh, the places on the earth uh, where the, 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 the forest has gone because of our way of living, when we put them again full of trees, then the whole pollution uh, problem, uh, the heating, would be uh, uh, solved. Yes, so th that made us uh, rather optimistic that uh, that story, it was just yesterday on the news. And then I think there's another Look thing. Each other and we said, yes. yes. <laughs> can we eat this guy? <laughs> maybe, maybe we can tell this tomorrow. <laughs> we thought. And uh, a second thing, uh, I think it's important that people try to do uh, what they can do for themselves. So, for example, uh, I'm, I, for my work, I have to to drive uh, through Holland. But I don't use a car. I do everything by train and by bus. There's a little thing, but uh, I think it's important to do. Yes. Another thing, we only fly with the airplane one, once in 10 years, for example. So we don't want to fly. So that's a little things you can do uh, for yourself. <laughs> so, um, do you guys think that if we, sorry, if we uh, we're under the Europe Dome, we are from Democracy International, and um, if I'm thinking about democracy, do you think if we would have more say in what the politicians do, that this would help climate change, or would it actually slow down the process? That's a hard question, but yeah. it's an important question as well. I don't know if we have more to say. No, I th I think when you show leadership, um, a lot a lot of people have to turn around to see the positive view of that uh, vision. So. Um, I don't. I think I have a vote in Holland. I have a vote in European Union. I have a vote in um, the 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 province, the the area I live in. Mm -hmm. So I think I vote uh, uh, three times in in four years. So I'm. I think my my voice is heard. And um, what I want is leadership on huge topics like climate change and migration. I think it's a dilemma because uh, you would, uh, it would be perfect when people uh, uh, took the democracy and then everything would be solved. But I'm afraid people won't vote for the climate in the end. So I think that uh, uh, when the government, uh, the government has a, a responsibility to uh, to say. Uh, this is what uh, we have got to do. And that's not uh, completely democratic, but I think sometimes the, the government has to decide things like that. I want to give a little input here myself, because I don't completely agree, because you were saying that the best way would, if this would work from top to down, so if the government would kind of force us to change our way of living. But if I look in our societies nowadays, the initiatives that exist that are very like sustainable and very social that's often local uh, initiatives organized by people themselves they, they start their own garden for example to to work on something they start their own group with which they start picking plastic they start i, I can i can name more examples there's a lot of Some, some 
sometimes it falls out really. So there's a lot of initiatives from people themselves that start from the bottom and that sometimes even become big. And I think in that sense, it's very important to make sure also these kind of voices are heard. Because if we look at politics, there are some voices that of course say, yeah, climate change is real, we need to change something. But there's also a lot of room for people who say the opposite thing. And instead of our ideas to change climate change coming from the bottom and making our way to the top, it's often this idea that it has to come from the top and being forced upon us. I think that will only make people more um, kind of not willing to go along with these decisions. If they are forced upon us from top to bottom, I think people don't want to comply to these things because then it's like, yeah, but now I have to pay more and now I can't go with the plane anymore. But if we let these initiatives and ideas come from the bottom, these will be things that people are on board for. That's that's how I personally see it. So, one stand something. Watch out. Oh, that's a good point, and um, um, I want to answer, uh, for example, uh, in Germany we made a book for more democracy with other organizations, and uh, it's about initiatives, in initiatives from, from, the, uh, from the ground, and what can they do by direct democracy, not to wait for the politics, go their own way, and we have examples what happens, yeah? factories stop coal, change the, the, the factories for making energy, going for a good bicycle way in Germany, all initiative from, from bottom up, so, and that's a way, because I think people in the head, they are in the future, yeah? and politics maybe in the past sometimes, and when we take this point, we can do something on the different levels, local levels, nations levels, maybe on the levels on the European Union, and when you think on, maybe on the level on the world. We have, take to, we have time to take part in this process. Yeah, exactly. So I, I personally think it's very important that if there are changes made, that we are all on board from them, and that, that can happen if they come from, from us, from the bottom yeah. to the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does someone want to add something? <laughs> I think uh, I realize now, I didn't think so much about it, that you're true, or that you're right. Uh, we have near our house a big forest. They wanted to make a golf field about it, but the, the citizens said no. And there was a savage war for, I think, uh, 20 years. About but in the end... <laughs> Uh, it not uh, really war, but it was kind of fighting, and in the end uh, there was no golf course, and we still can walk in the forest. And I realize now uh, that uh, there are a lot of uh, bicycle clubs in Holland uh, that do very important work, and they have a lot of influence. This, thank you for this insight. That's good. Yeah. Can I ask something to you guys? So, is there also a lot of these local initiatives in India that try to work from the bottom up against or? for climate change? Yes, uh, actually, uh, uh, like uh, he said uh, earlier, uh, there are more NGOs, so not only NGOs, uh, even the private organizations, uh, their uh, schools, college students, and uh, so they are also, uh, you know, from the bottom they are working, and not on, they are not up to, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, the people, uh, the, uh, the awareness is growing, so um, based on that, uh, the people are working also, yes. Nice. Uh, here I want to change this, the way we are thinking, it's a little bit. You are telling that from the bottom up, will give the much effect on this uh, global warming. But uh, my thought is, Actually, uh, from one of my examples, from my, my, my life, I said this, when I was a kid, <laughs> I used to draw something in my school, they give some titles, which of the titles you like, we can draw in that competition, and when I was a kid, there is one title, it's global warming, <laughs> but at the time itself, but past 20, 25 years before itself, we started speaking about global warming. <laughs> But still it's there, it's, it's coming from bottom up, from school, everywhere we started speaking, but it's not have that much effect on this global system, the temperature, <coughs> still we are going, still we are not controlling. But if the politicians or some system from the top, by the rule, by the law, 
something is there like that we supposed to follow as a demo as a citizen i have to follow the system as a, uh, as a citizen i have to follow the law once it's out of control we have to put some law we have to put some system mm -hmm. people have to follow the system then only we can come into the uh, what can i say mm, come into the good position or a normal average position average temperature can i say like that uh, i think you guys are feeling that the temperature is still growing mm -hmm. suddenly we have to come up come down so that we have to stop doing something it's not related it's not it's directly related to the temperature people people will not uh, supposed to stop the things by the by their own change individual change because they are uh, they are used to uh, live like that they immediately they, they can't stop like that the systems or plastics or anything the the technology they used it they practiced it <laughs> if you supposed to stop them they can't do right so some laws or systems we need to put to stop them immediately then only we can reach the uh, expectation this just a little bit my my thought <laughs> it's not actually yes, and it's, yeah it's it's very interesting because i i would like to react to it mm -hmm. um and i agree with you that just local initiatives if they stay on this local level it, that doesn't have enough input like if it really okay. stays only with people picking plastic on the beach that's nice but it's not going to change something on yeah. the systemic yeah, basis but it's not it will not give that much effect mm -hmm. but if you put some law if everyone in the in the in the city yeah the everyone in the city should come on the weekdays or some mm -hmm. one day yes one day in a month or one day in a quarter <laughs> per month they should come and collect something uh, the the count how much it will be and, and by self interest if some people are coming or picking up the plastics mm -hmm. it, it's good actually mm -hmm. but if maybe a law like that, just an example i'm not supposed to <laughs> supposed and to do impl or implement that law i'm not telling like that the it's impact. The, the impact of law i'm i'm i want to ex, i want to explain you that's it and and i agree with you very much i also think that it's important that there's a possibilities for these local initiatives for the local ideas that people have to grow up and to actually reach in the end politics and in that way actually to change laws it's not enough if they stay on the local level there must be a way mm -hmm. for up. citizens yeah. for us to reach politics and to say this is what we want this is the initiative that we're starting so i agree with you there yeah. should be more there's it's not just the local initiatives but it's stood from bottom up and the up is very important yeah, okay, in that okay. sense <laughs> yeah okay yeah. and it's important that we make and for me it's important that the citizens can make their own decision not only talk to the political member when we have direct democracy we make our own vote for problems and for, and for solutions So in that way, indeed, the laws that you're talking about will also be supported by the citizens that actually need to follow them. Mm -hmm. If suddenly the government, I don't know about where you are from, but I can imagine where I'm from in Bilthoven, we're a really small city. If the government suddenly say, you have to do social work every week for an hour, I think a lot of people would be like, wait, what? Why should I? Yeah, why, why should, should I? <laughs> well, I never had to do this. Why do I have to do this? There will be a lot of people who don't feel like that. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that comes from us and we say, we want to change something about things that are lying in the forest and from this initiative people talk and people decide okay this means that we need to work every every week an hour in the forest that's a completely different way of making a law so the awareness is then so the awareness then is crucial when you have to have when you have to in, in your in your example yes the awareness of, pe of, of people of, of the problems in the world and so um, do you see a lot uh, enough awareness, Mirte? Me? Yeah. Um. Because you say this is uh, such an important thing to have from bottom up these. Um you need to go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I shoot you? I want to thank you very much for joining. Yeah, I would like to ask you if you can say one last thing for Europe. What is your wish for Europe uh, and climate change? That we finish with that from you both. A quote. Yeah. <laughs> the thing actually, yeah, we are from La 
we are here from last month only mm -hmm. i think uh, yeah, one, your, uh, one thing uh, one thing i want to say yes. uh, for the global warming or something you guys are following some systems or following something to do and uh, as a new guy from a different country i don't want to disturb that first of all i will obey that and i will i'll try to follow the same as like you you guys are doing i don't want to disturb that thing what do you mean exactly with the system system means uh, <laughs> if you buy some coke right mm -hmm. from shop yes usually what you guys are doing you just put the again the bottle in some machine and that will give some voucher actually that system is not in our country if you buy some coke we will <laughs> we'll throw away mm -hmm. okay if you come to our country it's your wish you can keep it in your bag or you can throw away but what actually you will do you will keep it yourself and you will go and put it in somewhere a safe place where it will go to the recycle yeah that is the system actually and i just want to explain yes. so like that i i i just want to know the systems who are people who are all uh, following here first of all i will follow the same i don't want to disturb the thing <laughs> as a new guy to the this country <laughs> i don't want to disturb anything that is my opinion mm -hmm. Huh? Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you both. Do you still want to say something? No, actually. Okay. Yeah. Thank thank you very much for your input. Thank you. And uh enjoy the Netherlands a little yeah. longer. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice thank to you. meet you. Yes, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Ooh, watch out. Oh, bye. 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 Have a nice day. Should yeah. we talk on a little longer? Bye. 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 Nou, dan gaan we lekker in het Nederlands ja. verder. Um. Ja, ik, ik sta in Nederlands. <laughs> je misschien? Um, ik wil jullie eigenlijk vragen, wat denken jullie dat de EU moet doen als zo'n grote organisatie, transnationale, hoe belangrijk zijn ze in het hele klimaatproces? Mm -hmm. En uh, wat, wat, wat zijn de stappen die ze moeten ondernemen? Ik vind het heel moeilijk om meteen te zeggen. Ik ben nog even bezig met je vorige vraag. En die vraag ging over wat wens je de EU toe. Uh, wat ik de EU zou toewensen is dat we een soort voorbeeld worden voor de wereld. Hoe je kunt omgaan met milieu. Uh, zoals we dus ook eigenlijk als eerste zijn begonnen om het milieu te verpesten. En iedereen uh, uh, uit te buiten. Zouden we nu eigenlijk uh, weer voorop moeten lopen. En dat anders moeten doen. En uh, ik weet niet wat zijn naam is. Uh, ja, wat, wat? ja, wat Jurk net vertelde van dat lokale initiatief. Dat is voor mij mooi. Uh, dat, dat, daar had ik niet zo bij stilgestaan. Maar ik denk dat het mooi zou zijn als, uh, uh, als Europa laat zien. Uh, het is natuurlijk een heel groot overkoepelende organisatie is. Dat er veel lokale initiatieven zijn. En misschien dat dat uh, andere landen inspireert. Ja, dank je wel. Mooi. Um, is, je, moet nog, je moet nog even je vraag herhalen. Wat wens ik voor Europa? Um, Europa heeft een, um, is een heel groot uh, set van landen met een enorme interne markt. En um, ik denk dat... Um, uh, ik denk dat als we, wat ik net al zei, als we nagaan wat, wat, wat is belangrijk in de toekomst. We willen met elkaar een toekomst bouwen. Dat het goed is om na te gaan wat, um, wat daarvoor nodig is om die toekomst veilig te stellen. Um, zoals je bijvoorbeeld nu in, in, um, in Amerika ziet. Uh, daar is extreem rechts uh, uh, zit in het Witte Huis. Ja, um, de koningscentrales gaan gewoon weer open. Het akkoord van Parijs wordt opgezegd. Daarmee kom je misschien tegemoet aan, kom je tegemoet aan zijn achterban. Maar het is niet gericht op de toekomst. Want wat hebben wij als samenleving nodig naar de toekomst toe? En hoe overtuig je mensen daarvan? Mm -hmm. En ik denk dat daar nog meer op ingezet kan worden. Hoe breng je voor het voetlicht? Niet alleen met wetenschappelijke gegevens. Maar ook met uh, een appel op van wat, hoe, hoe de burgers de toekomst zien. 
um, en hoe wij dan kunnen leven, dat daar meer op e- wordt geïnvesteerd. In een, in een toekomstvisie met elkaar ontwikkelen. En hoe kan deze, dit, deze, deze wil van het volk, zeg maar, hoe kan dat bij de politiek terechtkomen, denk je? Um, hoe de wil van het volk, de wil, er bestaat niet de wil van het volk. Nou, je had het net over hoe wij als burgers de toekomst zien. Hoe kan dat idee waar je het over had, ja, hoe kan nou, dat bij de politiek terechtkomen? Um, dat wij als burgers de toekomst zien, maar ook dat de politici um, zich realiseren wat, wat er nodig is voor veiligheid. Dus ik denk dat het twee kanten op is. En um, uh, ik... Um, ik, voor mij voldoet het systeem zoals we dat nu hebben als een democratisch systeem. Ik vind dat het mooiste wat er, wat er in feite is. We hebben eigenlijk, gen, eigenlijk zoveel mogelijkheden om te stemmen en onze stem te laten horen. Mm-hmm. Um, maar misschien kunnen er nog meer inspraakorganen komen waarin uh, mensen daadwerkelijk um, per regio worden uitgenodigd om... Um, om op bepaalde topics te kunnen, een, een, een visie te kunnen laten horen. Maar dan moet er wel vanuit de Europese Unie een visie zijn waar je ja of nee eventueel op zou kunnen zeggen. Of waar je in zou kunnen participeren. Het is, kan nu, het is nu vaak nog een, 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 een soort bolwerk in Brussel die zich zorgen maakt eh, of, 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 of regels uitvaardigt over zaken waar mensen eigenlijk niet zo mee bezig zijn. Of die ze lastig vinden. Ik denk dat de, dat de Europese Unie vooral voor mensen um, iets moet zijn waar ze, waarvan ze denken, ze hebben onze veiligheid uh, voor ogen. En, um, en daarvoor hebben ze ons, ons nodig. Niet om ons lastige regels op te leggen. Of regels waar we niet op zitten te wachten. Nice. Ja, mijn gevoel is dat veel politieke partijen heel erg bezig zijn met hoe kunnen we weer stemmen winnen en dat soort dingen. En dat het heel erg belangrijk is dat politieke partijen meer uh, het land in gaan, zo, eigenlijk zoals jullie nu doen, en in gesprek gaan met bewoners. Uh, uh, in de lokale politiek heb ik wel gezien dat er bepaalde partijen zijn die heel goed contact hebben met bewoners en die dus doorgaan op burgerinitiatieven. Mm-hmm. En die bereiken vaak heel veel. Dat was in ons dorp ook wat betreft uh, dat bos. Daar is een lokale partij die is heel erg in samenwerking met uh, uh, burgers aan de slag gegaan. En dat bracht heel veel. Denk je dat dat ook op Europees niveau zou kunnen? Ik denk dat het heel erg belangrijk is om te doen. Omdat daarmee uh, Europa voor uh, burgers ook herkenbaarder wordt en concreter wordt. En een van de grote problemen nu is denk ik dat veel burgers denken Europa is ver weg en kost ons alleen maar geld. Door juist uh, uh, in gesprek te gaan en duidelijk te maken dat je luistert. Maar ook dan in zo'n gesprek de effecten van uh, je beleid te laten zien. Mm-hmm. Uh, denk ik dat Europa dichter bij de mensen komt te staan. Dus we moeten meer de, je vindt dat ze meer het, het landen in moeten gaan, zich moeten presenteren. Ja. Daadwerkelijk op lokaal niveau um, um, moet uitleg geven van beleid. En la, heel goed. En, 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 en reacties vragen. Ja. Reacties vragen op, op beleidsvoorstellen bijvoorbeeld. Dat, dat lijkt mij een fantastische natuurlijk. Ja. En, uh, dan, dan, dan vraag je direct uh, de mening van het volk, niet via de stembus, maar via um, tours die je doet, uh, uh, gecentreerd op bepaalde thema's. Ik heb uh, nog een beetje een andere vraag. Um, ik merk het heel vaak als ik met mensen praat in deze gesprekken over klimaatverandering, dat we heel erg uitkomen bij de politiek en de burgers. Maar ik mis altijd een beetje dat mensen praten over bedrijven bijvoorbeeld. Hoe moeten bedrijven hierin staan? Hebben bedrijven zelfverantwoordelijkheid of moet dat van de politiek komen? Wat denken jullie daarover? Ik denk dat bedrijven een enorme verantwoordelijkheid hebben, uh, maar vaak niet nemen. En ik denk dat uh, wat een bedrijf kan doen, en je ziet dat gelukkig langzamerhand meer bedrijven doen, is dat je een evenwicht zoekt tussen produceren en winst maken, maar ook je verantwoordelijkheid nemen. Mm-hmm. Dat gebeurt ook al op andere vlakken, bijvoorbeeld mensen in dienst nemen met een afstand tot de arbeidsmarkt. Uh, het gebeurt ook in uh, milieubewuster bijvoorbeeld uh, uh, horecavoorzieningen regelen, minder plastic gebruiken. Dus ik denk dat bedrijven daar al een klein beetje hun verantwoordelijkheid voor nemen, maar daar verder in kunnen gaan. 
Ja, je ziet door de maatschappelijke discussie en de uh, maatschappelijke uh, bewustzijn over bijvoorbeeld klimaatverandering, dat bedrijven denken, oh, ik kan daarmee scoren als ik milieubewust of maatschappelijk verantwoord ga ondernemen. Um, en um, zelfs grote bedrijven als Shell beginnen daarover na te denken. Wat hun maatschappelijke verantwoordelijkheid zou kunnen zijn uh, en, en, en hoe ze dat eventueel kunnen vormgeven. Um, dus het, als, als het zover is dat bedrijven denken, oh, daar, daar, daar is voor ons ook winst te behalen in de zin van maatschappelijk. Uh, um, uh, want je hebt, hebt toch ook een maatschappelijk contract hè, met, met, met burgers. Um, ja, dus vandaar dat als het in, in de samenleving een issue is, ik denk dat het dan pas voor bedrijven interessant wordt om uh, mee te doen. Eh, eh, los van de bedrijven die nu als start-ups proberen juist met vernieuwende technologie aan de gang te gaan. Die hebben natuurlijk een hele andere uitgangspositie. Maar je hebt natuurlijk nog steeds zeer vervuilende bedrijven. Data Steel bijvoorbeeld. Um, die beginnen nu ook wat initiatieven te ontwikkelen om um, um, minder vervuilend te produceren. En als dat een optioneel komt, dan denk ik, wow, nee, helemaal, dat is wel een aardverschuiving. Maar het, 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 het is misschien maar zo'n stukje van het productieproces, maar het is wel iets waarvan ik denk, oké, okay, gelukkig dringt het daar ook door. Ondertussen stoten ze zoveel uit, dat als zij niet in Nederland zouden zitten, dat we dan al lang en breed aan de Parijsdoelstellingen zouden, zouden, ja, maar ja, zij, zij vervuilen zoveel. Ik vind dat dat soort bedrijven eigenlijk veel meer... Um, um, in de belangstelling moeten staan wat betreft wat zij um, zeg maar op wereldschaal um, en wat zij de toekomstige generaties aandoen met hun vervuilende activiteiten. Zij zouden daar veel meer uh, verantwoordelijkheid in moeten nemen, maar daardoor ook veel meer um, niet, niet, niet alleen bekend zijn als van, oh, dat is een groot bedrijf en er zijn zoveel banen mee gemoeid. Nee, dit is een groot bedrijf en hoeveel vervuilen ze? En ik denk dat daar nog wel wat aandacht aan zou kunnen worden besteed. Ja, bij mij schiet nog wat te binnen. Ik ben, ik ben nog even bezig met het burgerinitiatief <lacht> en hoe belangrijk dat is. Want ik denk dat dat eigenlijk in het bedrijfsleven ook speelt. Daar heb je kleine bedrijven die heel erg staan voor milieu. En voor innovatie. Mm -hmm. En uh, ik denk dat die op een gegeven moment wel invloed gaan hebben. En uh, dat grote bedrijven dan iets hebben van ja, we willen we mee blijven tellen. En willen we de, de potentiële kopers tevreden houden. Dan moeten we daar wat mee. Ja, ik wil er eigenlijk wel iets aan toevoegen. Want ik heb het idee dat daar ook een belangrijke um, taak eigenlijk ligt van de media. Dat de media daar uh, die transparantie... Ja van bedrijven naar de burgers, dat daar, ik bedoel, de, uiteindelijk vind ik dat moet eigenlijk van de bedrijven zelf wel komen, maar in ons huidige systeem is de, is de media daar denk ik een hele grote taak in. Ja. Ja. En hoe zie je dat dan? Maken ze iets concreter? Nou, in de richting dat onderzoeksjournalistiek zich ook zou moeten focussen op klimaatverandering, op wat doen bedrijven voor klimaatverandering en dat op die manier er transparantie kan ontstaan tussen bedrijven en burgers in wat ze uitstoten, wat hun effecten zijn. Je ziet het al best wel natuurlijk bijvoorbeeld met de kledingindustrie. Daar het is altijd de media die uiteindelijk laat zien, ah, er is een grote schandalen, er is een, een, iets ingestort in Bangladesh, een grote ja. fabriek. Mm -hmm. En dit moet via de media naar de burgers komen, want bedrijven gaan er zelf denk ik niet mee komen. Mm -hmm. Toch is in, in Nederland heel vaak uh, uh, met hele grote bedrijven die voor heel veel werkgelegenheid zorgen en economische groei daarmee, dat dat, uh, zoals uh, bijvoorbeeld ook Schiphol, mm -hmm. hè, dat staat voorop. De, er wordt altijd gezegd dat er zijn zoveel banen mee gemoeid. En als dat bedrijf... Um, maar wie zegt dat? Um, dat, dat uh, politici bijvoorbeeld. Precies. Ja. En ik denk daarom dat je zeg maar, je kunt niet alleen van politie verwachten dat zij die problemen aankaarten. Want politie moet op meerdere verschillende dingen letten. Mm -hmm. Maar als de media is, als het goed is, onafhankelijk van politiek mm -hmm. en van het bedrijfsleven, en kan op die manier wel dit soort punten aankaarten. Sommigen doen dat. Ja, ja, zeker. Sommige media doen dat ook al heel goed. Ja. Ja. ja, daar zijn we dan weer abonnee van. Ja. <laughs> Uh, ik ben eigenlijk door mijn vragen heen. Okay. Ik uh, zou voorstellen om nog een laatste rondje te maken. Dat jullie nog een laatste input, een laatste comment kunnen maken over dit onderwerp. Als jullie willen natuurlijk. En uh, ook hopelijk een beetje in relatie tot Europa, misschien democratie. Uh, maar het mag alles zijn wat jullie uh, graag willen toevoegen.
Ik vind het een heel goed initiatief dat jullie nemen. En ik denk dat het een voorbeeld is van wat er veel vaker moet gebeuren. En ik vond het erg leuk om mee te praten. Ook in deze mooie uh, ruimte die een beetje symbool staat voor samenwerking, denk ik, en, uh, en toekomst. Dus dank je wel. Dank je wel. Ja, ik denk dat en voor mij geldt hetzelfde dat ik het heel waardevol vind om um, een plek te hebben waar je um, um, je zo kunt uitspreken en waar er goede vragen worden gesteld. En, en, um, ik kan me voorstellen uh, dat, je, dat zoiets zo, zo iets als dit, dat dit wat meer een permanent karakter krijgt. Mm-hmm. Want nu heb je een tour van hè, een x aantal dagen door het land en dan stopt het ook weer. Uh, en als het iets meer permanent karakter zou krijgen, dat dit ding bijvoorbeeld hier langer staat. En dat, dat het meer bemens be- zou zijn en zo. Um, misschien gaat het dan ook voor mensen meer als een herkenningspunt leven. Uh, waardoor um, uh, als er, als er uh, democratische verkiezingen zijn van de Europese Unie in mei, dat hier dan bijvoorbeeld inderdaad discussies losbarsten. Nu, nu denkt iedereen, oh het is lente, we gaan naar buiten, we gaan naar, naar zee en hebben dat even nog niet zo de behoefte. Maar misschien over een maand wel als de verkiezing uh, losbarstte. En um, dus meer, meer, meer uh, structureel zou ik zeggen, dit soort initiatieven. Dankjewel. Uh, dank jullie heel erg wel voor, uh, dank jullie wel voor, het, uh, voor het meedoen. Ja. Um, ik wil nog even zeggen, deze, uh, dit initiatief wordt georganiseerd door Democracy International. We zijn een organisatie uit Duitsland en uh, dat was eigenlijk alles wat ik wilde zeggen.